Happy New Year. Happy 2024. It's the Public Goods Plug, aka Web3 Plug, core contributor of Potluck. And I'm proud to announce the start of the Public Goods Podcast. And so what we're doing at the Public Goods Podcast, this isn't normally the format. This is the inaugural setup. A bunch of core contributors and potluck will basically be interviewing a bunch of change makers in the space, especially those building the public goods you know and love and love to fund, and then also those building public goods funding mechanisms. And maybe Web 2 and maybe Web 3, we can learn something from everybody. So a lot of excited things to happen in 2024 and beyond. But since it is the start of the new year, I thought I would give kind of my predictions and outlooks into public goods into 2024, but also give a little recap in 2023 because a lot of amazing stuff did happen. And although I'm predicting stuff, there's stuff that I want to see that we need to manifest. So I'm going to go a little bit into some PG manifestations, public goods manifestations in just a second. But the main reason why I did this and started this podcast and why I want to create this media format is to not only go through my exploration and have a one-on-one and two-on-one and in-depth conversations with a lot of the change makers in space and learn this as I build public good funding mechanisms while you guys join me, but I'm a fiend for this content. I'm a fiend for a lot of public goods content. Big shout out to Green Pill Network. Great big shout out to Web3 for Good with the kind of consistent weekly newsletters. Big shout out to Crypto Altruism. I love the content that you're doing there. Refi Podcast, the D Side Podcast by Molecule. There's a lot of players in this space that really inspire me, and I take a lot of the lessons and implement them into the practice today. And one of the main reasons why I'm doing this is because Green Pill, shout out to Kevin Owaki, OG, the space went from Tuesday, Thursday, every week for podcast content to literally five a quarter uh, since he came back to Gitcoin. So I'm a fiend for this content. If you ain't going to make it, then we're going to make it ourselves. So um, shout out to everybody here. And shout out to also all the places and kind of the events that also really stimulated a lot of the ideas I'm having here. So one of the models that we have here at the Public Goods Podcast is to innovate, make an impact, then iterate. And so I hope a lot of builders and founders here or people maybe even sitting on the sidelines uh, learn a lot of these contents. You know, let that hit that mycelial network, as Owaki likes to say, and actually put that into practice or hit me up. And, uh, yeah, we can find an avenue for you to actually build that. So I'm going to go a little bit recap in 2023. A lot of dope stuff happened. It's also, like, beginning of 2023 was kind of, like, down bad. I remember back in November, I was coming off from Breakpoint. Shout out to the family over at Solana. Everyone knows I'd be repping that near, building near public goods infrastructure. But I, lo- I love my homies at Solana. And I was at Breakpoint. And literally all that FT, I was at like an FTX party one day and then like the next day, crash. And, and uh, yeah, it's crazy to see kind of the whole ecosystem, especially as Celsius and uh, like three arrows. And then we, were, we thought it might be contagion with, you know, grayscale. And uh, but there is a lot of things that happened in the beginning of the year. And then there was like. The banks in Silicon Valley Bank, and then there was like the DPEG of USDC, which I lost a lot of money. I really thought things were going to crash. You know, we're the crypto game. If you've been in the game, you know that anything could happen. Although, you know, we're now having industry adoption, uh, you know, especially being in America, there's a lot of regulations that happen. Like, not only could you lose all your money, but you could lose your freedom with this game. But making an impact is worth it. So, when things like this happen, sometimes, you know, a lot of us were the uh, conception that, all right. USDC eliminated. All right. Maybe Solana's eliminated. But shout out to Solana. Uh, they're absolutely killing it, actually doing more volume than ETH and all the L2s combined right now. So shout out to Solana, the builders, Chewy Glass, and actually building dope products. So at the beginning of the year, we really thought we was down bad. We really thought we was getting eliminated. We was really in the bear. So shout out to all of y'all sticking through it, still building. We got a bull coming up. Um, and we about to ride that up on the impact wave. But throughout that whole year where we're getting down bad, spacked on the left and spacked on the right, there was actually people in the impact space consistently making progress. So I got to give a big salute to all my peers. I'm going to start out with the OGs and the OGs. 
big shout out to Gitcoin. Um, so Gitcoin did a lot of major things, shifting um, to kind of just an Ethereum-based thing to adding different layers, but also um, announcing the Allo stack. So initially when Gitcoin was built, it wasn't built with composability in mind. And I'll go over that in 2024. And also manifestations build with composability in mind. Although you founders are shipping pretty fast, you got to make sure that when you guys blow up, manifest that. When people are adopting you, people can easily integrate you into their stack. Uh, but what Allo protocol is, is or Allo V2, um, so you have Gitcoin, which is really three products when you look at it. You got Gitcoin Passport. Um, Gitcoin's coming off of quadratic funding as one of their primary products. They also had bounty for the past. But with quadratic founding, you're having these people who, these sponsors who have these matching pools. And then uh, based on unique users and unique contributions, they get matched. Uh, they get matched even more from that pool. So if you have uh, a bunch of different wallets uh, who are basically gaming the system, um, you can result in a lot of unfair outcomes. So a lot of y'all building quadratic funding, you know you got to essentially build uh, civil resistance tools on top of that. This is something I'm learning as well, building QS in the near ecosystem. But like one of the things that they launched with Allo, which is the set of the underlying contracts for um, quadratic funding, and also they're adding things like direct grants. It's already there. Um, and then Retro PGF, which is in beta, they launched their V2 back in the fall and they've actually been implementing it with a bunch of players in the space. So they have the impact, universal impact pool with Endowment. I'm gonna go a little bit into that because Endowment, I absolutely love your product. I use it. Um, big shout out to y'all. Um, I'm gonna just save that for a little later. They also implemented it uh, within other th other experiments like Quadratic Lensters, which uses quadratic funding with tipping on Lens. Shout out to Raid Guild who built that. So they're really experimenting with actually integrating Allo Give it shout out to Give it. They integrated also a quadratic funding with two rounds. I think one in East Barcelona, which was at the suburb, and then and another one for the giving season. And you really see, and this happened with the UNICEF round that Gitcoin did as well. Um, the this inflection point where the match round is being exceeded by donations. And like so, if you have a twenty thousand dollar pool, people actually donate twenty thousand dollars as well. So especially from the perspective of a sponsor, it's becoming a really good and compelling narrative that you might actually incentivize not only new projects getting onboarded, uh, but also more contributions that you're putting up. And so it's, it's crazy to see this inflection point. And also big shout out to, you know, the former head of Impact, Azeev at Gitcoin, um, did a lot of big strides on really adopting big names in the space to do quadratic study grounds. He did one with Shell, they got some blowback, but I got a different philosophy about that. Did like I was saying, UNICEF, uh, American Cancer Society, and a bunch of other big names in uh, the pipeline. So big shout out. Um, you know, we're usually looking at like Polygon for doing these big level BD deals, but at the end of the day, like the way that Impact does deals and onboards these big enterprises and these big corporate uh, corporations into the space is way different than Polygon, which is like or any other kind of L1, which essentially subsidize integrations. They don't normally lead to actually sticking this into the ecosystem. I think what's happening uh, with actually imp using impact as a way to onboard organizations is, um, first of all, they know we're not scamming and off the hype, um, and they can actually see um, kind of tangible results, and we're not directly paying them. They're paying us. Um, and so I see that... 2020, 2024 outlook actually impacted being the one of the major drivers for on, onboarding major BD deals. And I'll go a little bit into that. I'll be a little back and forth with things in terms of 2023 and how it translates to 2024. But I still got to go with Gitcoin because I'm, I'm going to have a whole little segue. But uh, Gitcoin, they also had a bunch of shell and point series bunch of dope conversations and they actually had the first one in uh, Asia. I'm really bullish on Asia actually. That's also one of my 2024 outlooks. Funny in the comments had their first thing in Taipei. Shout out to Dow Zero. A lot of the people out there building open source communities. Uh, but um, like they had the first shadow point in Asia. It was beautiful to see. Had the privilege of going there. They also, oh, oh they also uh, launched their own well, not their own, with a coalition of people in the impact space, they launched a public goods network, 
which is built on the OP stack, which is a layer two, that sequencer fees goes entirely towards public goods funding. And so this has me transition to giving a shout out to one of the biggest OGs in the space and the precedent that you're setting for the rest of us in the industry. Um, so for y'all though, don't know what Retro PGF is, it stands for Retroactive Public Goods Funding. And it is initiative in the optimism ecosystem that rewards people who've already done work and already have shown an impact with OP tokens uh, based on the OP governance. And they're on season three right now. I think literally uh, OP, Retro PGF season three is being done right now. They're giving out 30 million OP tokens at the time of this recording. I think OP is around $3.70. So that's around like $110 million, which is pretty huge to go towards public goods funding mechanisms. And um, every version they actually hacked is, I, I was trying to get an answer on how they actually implemented it. Um, and so shout out to Allo because they're integrating Retro PGF, which is essentially giving badges to people and then delegating funds accordingly that into their Allo stack. So other people in the EVM ecosystem can integrate that. That's in beta. I'll link it in the show notes on how you get involved in that. But what uh, Retro PGF is inherently doing is they're basically setting a precedent that um, if you have an ecosystem that actually rewards builders and founders for building stuff that is useful and they know that they could actually gain a sufficient amount of income from just building and the ecosystem will reward, you're essentially driving more people into your ecosystem and inherently into your own stack. And so not only did you see the rise of people building on like optimism because of retro PGF, and, but you saw more people adopting the OP stack. And so public goods network is just one example of that. But this is a pretty, especially looking from ecosystems like Near and other L1s, it's like, this is pretty huge. Like not only with PGN building on it, you had people like Zora or Mantle Network, which is BitDAOs, essentially one of the largest DAOs in Web3 building on the OP stack. You have Base, which is huge, like literally, and, and now you have the base engineering team contributors to the OP stack. And the sequencer fees are like, the fees that are generated from base, now they actually made a deal, well, from the start they made a deal that those go directly towards Retro PGF. So you have people building on the stack and, ha and naturally building because they know they're gonna get these rewards. Big deals coming in, like base is now bringing in like, literally the biggest brands on the ecosystem coming to your chain. And now like if, for example, friends tech is on base, which is on the OP stack, even endowment is on base. Uh, so you kind of see like this kind of alignment with the OP stack, especially for people in the impact space, people getting funding from it, people building their stack on it, and this inherently driving additional deals. And then those fees generated from the networks actually going back towards public goods funding. So, from other L1's perspective and other ecosystems perspective, it's like this gives a very compelling argument to fund public goods and a builder economy so that builders will build and people will build on your stack and even businesses uh, and big brands, uh, which makes it way easier for people um, to convince their boards to build on your stack. So, there's really a flywheel effect, uh, you know coming from the OP stack, which I attribute a lot into Retro PGF. And shout out to Retro PGF, they actually saved Gitcoin at one point. I wanna say save, but they really, they really save in these projects who don't have uh, uh, like direct funding sources. So big shout out to them, big shout out to everyone participating in these rounds. Um, and yeah, check out Retro PGF 3. So I kind of was alluding to it, but endowment, yo. Shout out to endowment. So if y'all don't know what endowment is, Endowments, honestly, like, I, I, I was talking, I was talking, I, I ran into the guys of Barcelona and the product wasn't where it was at. It was, it, it, it was dope. Like in terms of Web3, one of the things that we have is the friction of actually onboarding people, um, especially when a product like Endowment where essentially you're donating to verified 501c3 charities and getting a tax write-off on one of it, which is a huge market, over half a trillion um, in the United States, and a lot of that now just transitioning into online giving, 
and then crypto giving. And I think crypto people who give crypto give like a hundred X of like traditional donors. So like the actual argument for why nonprofits should adopt crypto is very compelling. Um, and endowment's one of those tools that make it extremely easy to do so. And in, I think, another, like, a lot of stuff happened in the fall. And so one of the things that happened in the fall were endowment launched endowment for everyone. And so basically looking into their product is, so in, in America, say I make like 50K, um, and uh, I can write off like 4K, around like 4K of that in write off if I donate to charities. And so, um, Usually I have this problem of like, hey, I need to donate to a bunch of charities. Like it's December, I, I need to get it in for the tax year. Um, and I kind of have to donate to the charities, figure out if they accept the asset, and then essentially like give all then. Um, they leverage something called a donor advised fund, which is essentially like a, it's, 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 it's like a fund, but the moment you donate to it, any type of asset, it may be stocks, it may be crypto, it may be anything. You could put anything in a donor advised fund. You could put, if you have a goats, you could put goats in there. And um, if you have, uh, uh, so you can write off it immediately. So it separates the decision of, hey, I'm going to get the write off now. I don't know which nonprofit I'm going to donate to or which series of nonprofits, but I'm going to get the write off now. And it sits in a donor advised fund. And then essentially, you can then delegate to verified charities as a grant giving organization. And so, Normally, this is the status quo, and this is why I love endowment, because they're really solving a, a problem in this space uh, directly. If I want to start a donor advice fund, I was looking into doing this because, you know, building public goods platforms is like, I got to essentially go to like, I think there are three providers, like Schwab, Fidelity, and then I think some else, some, some else. It's like 5K, 5K, or 25K to start uh, one of these uh, funds. But uh, essentially, like, you can do it for free, on endowment and with endowment for everyone, they basically added Web3 odds. So you could essentially, uh, with your email, have an account on base. Um, and then you can donate crypto, wh whether it's OTC through exchanges or directly on the native chain um, or cash through any type of like fiat or bank or Stripe integration or stocks. Um, so you can go on email, donate any type of asset into your own donor advised fund. Uh, where and you can also even apply for public donor advised funds where people can donate to your fund, but you can essentially get that kind of tax write off, donate any type of asset, don't need to save your private keys, and then later in the year, um, you can or at any time you could essentially be a grant giving organization that delegate those funds to verified nonprofits, which they pull um, from the IRS list. And then they have this verification process where even if they don't have an account, they can verify later. And you saw this a lot with um, the like retro uh, PGF. It's like even the projects they kind of delegated and gave rewards to, they actually had to hit up to claim these rewards. And this is one problem we have in the industry. It's like either they don't have a profile and we can't donate to them. We have to onboard. That's like kind of what's happening when we're building like Potluck and also a Gitcoin or, or even in Giveth. It's like, I can't really donate to projects that are on it. Um, or you essentially make a profile and uh, on behalf of the user, you have a claim process, which is also what Drips Network is doing with GitHub claiming. So shout out to them. And this is something in terms of manifestations and what I'm going to see in 2024. And what I really want people to build is clearer claim and verification systems and verification APIs we can use across a bunch of different chains. Um, and so in conversations about building that too, but uh, like that is a big issue. So what endowment does is essentially lets you put money in this fund, give out grants at any time of the year. And say you put Dogecoin in this fund, if it goes up, you don't have to pay the capital gains because you already got your write-off. So essentially you're, you're kind of like, the manager of a fund and you can give out grants like any traditional foundation to nonprofits. How I mentioned this before with Gitcoin and how they implemented uh, the Allo stack. They actually had this impact pool. And then they're given like 30 or 40 K like every month or couple of weeks at a 200 K. So normally, so what I hate about Gitcoin is the onboard experience. I'll be honest, like, like, uh, and and this is one of the things that we definitely need to prioritize and I'm manifested into 2024. We have to build products that have UX built in. We don't need to have these 24-hour like 
calls when we're onboarding people. We need the actual product to explain the product itself and build with this in mind, which is one of the things I see in theory because which is very, it's, it's not there yet. But um, what endowment allows you to do is if you donate, uh, so they have this 200K matching round powered by Aloe on the back end, but if you donate to a nonprofit, which is like, you may have signed up with your email, uh, you may have donated a stock, you may have donated crypto, you may have uh, donated uh, like fiat. Uh, based on what you donated, they basically match the matching pool on that. So you have a way of doing quadratic funding where you don't have to go through Passport. You could just go through an email and you could use fiat, which is pretty revolutionary. So shout out to Gitcoin and Endowment on the collaboration. And also, I love now. I'm, I'm gonna mention. I'm, I mentioned drips, but I'm gonna talk about nouns right now. So if y'all don't know what nouns is, nouns is they got a, they're basically selling a nouns every day uh, for the past like 800 days, and it goes for around like 10k. And then it's like an auction, and then like every day, um, all that money goes to the treasury. And then people who are the holders basically vote on proposals that expand the nouns brand. So the nouns you might have seen the noggles. Um, they're a, one of the bullish PFP collections, uh, but they are CC zero, Creative Commons zero. So they are an open source brand anyone could use and anyone could proliferate and they fund things that support this. So they funded like Zora in the past um, for building a nouns builder across different chains. So you can easily build these kind of NFT based uh, regular auction interval treasury DAOs um, and and funded things like Prop House where you could kind of have smaller grants and things like that. So there was a recent proposal for um, nouns to give to endowments. So I love seeing this NFT ecosystem crossover collaboration. And that's 2024 inside. I see a lot of NFT ecosystems actually directly contributing to their rewards um, to these public good funding mechanisms. And for even public good funding mechanisms to build in a lot of primitives, like taking in uh, meme tokens, uh, maybe even using Uniswap routers, or in near we have ref routers to auto swap and actually sell them to USDC or stuff like that because uh, you know companies need to actually use these funds and not necessarily hold uh, these uh, meme coins. But I really see an intersection between NFTs and public goods funding as well, especially when you see a lot of people in the bull run, and you can see this, when more people get rich in the ecosystem, they tend to donate more. And when more people have inherent assets in that ecosystem, they tend to like actually buy NFTs, things like that. So uh, I see this really, this flywheel effect, but big shout out to Nouns and Endowments. Uh, love, love the both of y'all. So yeah, shout out to the collab on there. And shout out to Endowment for being one of the most seamless experiences of uh, that I've seen in the, in the space as well. And so I mentioned drips. And so, okay, so I'm also gonna talk about donor advised funds. This is one of the things that I see as another trend uh, because like at the end of the day, like we're only capturing such a small bit of the ecosystem, um, which is nonprofit funding and online giving. Um, like we're not even like, I saw an estimate somewhere like 4 billion, but I don't know. I was, I was adding up all of like the different ecosystems I'll go into it later because I haven't given all my shout outs yet. But Drips Network. So, so what if y'all don't know what Drips Network is, they actually launched recently. I thought they launched before, but I, they, were, they were showing me their product in uh, Taipei and I really, I really love this idea. And so um, Drips Network came from like the Radworks type of crew. If y'all know what Radical is, it's like a decentralized Git. And so what Drips Network is, it's the ability uh, to fund software and stream funding to software and its critical dependencies. So I can say, hey, I am building this app on, uh, I'm building Potluck, for example, and we use near API.js. We may use, you know, I am human, NDC repo for uh, civil resistance. I can be like, hey, for every dollar you give me, I'm gonna take 50% as a core contributor. I'm gonna give 10% to that repo at 20% to this repo. And then essentially they can set up their own stream. So they can say, hey, when I fund me, you go to my underlying dependencies. So you're basically funding your dependencies upstream and you have the user define that. And if a person does not have a GitHub, like uh, they don't have an account for their repo, um, you can actually configure on GitHub a way to claim this and reward your contributors there. So it's really this idea of being able to fund your dependencies and define those dependencies as well. I'm all, and this is also a big trend. I see more primitives 
happening for funding open source dependency. There's also TXYZ, which is essentially uh, doing something similar. Uh, this built by the guy who built Homebrew Package Manager on Mac, but essentially a way to reward dependencies automatically based on uh, their usage. And so the idea of like not just, hey, I'm someone who sees this impact, I'm going to delegate to you or I have to vote with my dollars, actually seeing, especially in software, what is dependent on each other is really huge because we're generating billions of dollars on the open source software side for these um, corporations. And outside of these corporations directly maintaining this, there really isn't a steady stream for um, like devs uh, to know that they'll earn. And GitHub has sponsorships, but they're not actually learning real value. So to the Drips Network, they also streamed, uh, I think, a few million to um, dependencies they have when they're actually building their software. So shout out to them. And speaking of dripping drips to drips, or dripping funding to drips, I don't know, I think they call it drips. Um, big shout out to Octane. And so Octane is another trend. I'm also giving a shout out to Metapool because I'm over on the near side. So Metapool is one of the first like liquid staking uh, providers on near. And so they actually put all of their uh, rewards into their DAO. They actually give that to uh, people expanding their mission, but they expanded to ETH because, you know, they got more money on the ETH side. So shout out to them. Um, and they actually give all of their rewards directly to Gitcoin and they ran rounds in LATAM and uh, it's pretty cool to see a lot of these like DeFi infrastructure using kind of staking rewards and giving it directly to public goods infrastructure. So big shout out to Metapool and similar to Octane, which completely, to me, it came out the left field, but like what you guys gotta realize is like these layer twos are new. There's been layer ones before Ethereum. Um, there are new layer ones now and they have billions of dollars in their ecosystem and they want, uh, they want new ways to allocate that. And so when you see the retro PGFs and you see the other players in the ecosystem make an impact this way and actually even drive value for their ecosystem, it really changes the narrative. So you might see, and this is one of my 2024 predictions, more layer ones building and incentivizing public goods outside of their ecosystem um, uh, in, in general and coming out the woodwork because Crypto space is big and there's a lot of people with Buddy. And one of the people that threw me off of the left field was uh, essentially Octane.Build. And so, my bad, I'm, <laughs> I'm running the breath. I'm like out here pacing back and forth, excited about 2024. But what Octane.Build is, is it's essentially, so there was, if y'all know about Golem Network, it's like this decentralized GPU stuff back in like, 2016 or 2017, I remember copping that. And it was like, uh, essentially they had an ICO on Ethereum and uh, essentially they have a bunch of Ethereum and they're using, a, like basically they built this thing called Octane. Um, well, it's like a spin out uh, where they allocate some of their ETH rewards and to, uh, um, and then they have this Octane app where people who are staking Golem or GNT or whatever it's called, can actually delegate which public goods funding to uh, give those rewards to, like in the most sim simplistic terms. So they're actually funding things, not not they're building on Golem, which most layer ones in different ecosystems do, but general public goods infrastructure. So they had a round with Shifi recently, they funded, funded the Cobbits, they funded Drips, they funded Gitcoin, and I think it was the tune of like 300 some it was like 400k in their first epoch so they're doing this every epoch and kind of the incentive is like hey we're getting uh we're getting more people to use golem as a use case to delegate to, to funding public goods which is pretty amazing uh to see um, that yeah really like i think one of the things that we realize the ecosystem is like we need to get off all of the chain maximalism. And that's what I love about the impact space is that we're able to, you know, parlay where more people would be in their sec, learn from each other, and even fund each other and have these plural funding mechanisms that uh, Kevin O'Walke is talking about. Because at the end of the day, like, I don't really think people care whether it's quadratic funding or direct or grad, but the fact that, like, I can build in the ecosystem and people will recognize my rewards and contribute to me from multiple funding sources, and that is competitive 
uh, towards you know working a corporate salary where I can just build open source, I can build impact and not worry about it is a huge statement. So it's a beautiful thing to see different players come to this space and start to fund each other outside of different ecosystems. So big shout out to Octa and Octa.build, go show out. I think Epoch 2 is coming out, you know. So big shout out uh, to them. Man, I'm running out of breath. There's so much 2023 shout outs. Uh, but one thing I like, y'all don't know me, I don't got no home or nothing. I'm crypto homeless. I'd be out here on these streets wherever that impact is popping. And I had a huge privilege to go to a lot of these uh, events and be shaped, uh, uh, my thoughts shaped by a lot of conversations being had outside of just podcasts. And so a big shout out to Fund in the Commons. Y'all better check it out. I'm going to talk about AI in a second because we're doing a Fund in the Commons with Mir in San Francisco with Berkeley and going over. It's going to be very AI, Web2 deep, uh, an FTC like you never saw it before. But if y'all don't know what Fund in the Commons is, is there a, they're spin out of protocol labs, but they're essentially uh, a shelling point for people building public goods and, and commons in the space. And they came back in Paris, ECC, with a, smash like that was my favorite event um it, it just had the most people actually building and caring about the ecosystem i've ever been to and i've been to every all five one of the comments around the world since because i I'm, I'm a fiend for that everywhere everywhere there's an ftc i'm an ftc groupie so big shout out uh, to them so they came back in paris you know 2023 um they had a berlin residency program where they actually bring people into a dope environment uh, to build for a month. And then they had FTC Berlin with DSI Berlin. Um, that was pretty dope. And big shout out to everyone in the DSI space. I'm going to give y'all a shout out. 2023, y'all making moves. And then they had uh, the FTC Turkey. And they're starting to partner with more kind of local organizations. So shout out to Deepak, everyone out there. Um, they also had a, a shelling point, like back to back there. So shout out to Gitcoin and the events going on over there. Um, and then... There was another one. Pretty sure there was five. Paris, Berlin, Istanbul. I think Taipei. Pretty sure Taipei. I don't know. I felt like I went to five, but like, yeah, there was one in there was one in Taipei, which is yeah, like I was saying, big shout out to Dow Zero and um, which is pretty cool to see different government officials come about. But they also had a hackathon before their residency, so you see like just like a like an original like web three kind of crypto native event really bringing people from like different shades into the space um and opportunity for us to actually like meet each other is, but actually emerge into web two traditional government now ai now hackathons and now like a residency um so big shout out to to david and the crew of plenty of the comments uh and all the work that you guys are doing there it's been a big kind of impact on me personally i highly advise everyone to go in sf i think it's on the 13th and the 14th um, at well, Berkeley. And so speaking of, you know, different events and stuff like that, I think all of y'all probably heard of Zuzalu, you know, this kind of Vitalik funded event out in Montenegro, this network state where kind of the best builders came into the space. It set up a movement about network states and big shout out to Balaji, network state podcast, network state conference happening before Breakpoint. Um, I see a lot of emergence of people, especially like crypto, like <laughs> We're used to like, you know, a lot of a lot of us crypto guys originally like we uh, we we's about it, you know? Like we 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 trippy, we about it, like we we move around, we're very fluid. If you wanna tax us, you know, we go to a different country. I'm just joking. Uh but like you have this really nomadic culture and wanting to go to the places where impact is needed. And I think network states really come to that. So like, one of the biggest problems with being a nomad is like you don't really know people, you're pretty much alone. Um so having like not only people who are building and innovators in the space come to one place, but actually building tools and infrastructure to support this ecosystem and to begin to get like recognized by externalities uh, and then have this kind of pop up everywhere is a huge deal. Um, and so Suzalu, they even just the Suzalu pocket thing, there's been inspiration stuff going on everywhere else. They had um, Zoo Hacks in Singapore, went to that, it was dope. And then a lot of talented devs as well. Um, and then they had, uh, like, Zoo Connect in uh, Turkey. Like, they had, like, a little residency thing, and they, like, had a hackathon, too, and they built stuff like Zoo Path, like, their ZK identity solution. So you have people actually building infra to support these as well. That's one of my predictions in 2024. Not only the proliferation of network states, 
and network state infrastructure, um, but like actually penetration into developing countries by a lot, like setting this blueprint, having a lot of us start different cells in different places and really have um, network states where they need it the most. Rather than kind of just resorts that are popping up and stuff like that, we actually are intentful about the tools and technologies that we're building. We empower the community and we build more longer term sustainable living um, in the places that need it the most. But you had a lot of people inspired by that too. You had, um, uh, you had like, like in Chiang Mai in Thailand, there was Mu Chiang Mai, uh, like shout out to Four Seeds in the community out there, East Pad Thai. You have even right now, well, I don't think right, like few days, uh, Vitalia is, I'm, I'm gonna leave all this in the show notes so y'all can uh, follow along, but you have Vitalia, which is like a biohacking type of city um, happening too in, I think, Roatan, Honduras, which is one of the economic zones that they're mentioning in network states. And shout out and check out the network states conference. Uh, there's not only people who are building this infrastructure, starting this community, big shout out to Cabindau, all the suppers they're doing everywhere, uh, but like you have people essentially building modular homes, building charter cities, building uh, currencies and economies there. So I think outside we're stuck in a crypto bubble, but um, you could look at like Dubai as a network state, as Singapore as a network state. And it's really uh, powerful to see uh, Balaji like bring a lot of players in the room and have us think bigger outside of Web3 and really make an impact and drive the civilizations, uh, uh, the new age of civilization. So that's pretty good and dope stuff that's going on. I mentioned DSI since I mentioned biohacking. Shout out to DSI World. Shout out to Athena Dow. Shout out to Hair Dow. Shout out to Molecule. Shout out to IP NFTs. I think IP NFTs are going to be a huge splash. I think a lot of onboarding of traditional scientists and people in the space and even maybe some major publications or having the norms for a lot of these platforms being built for, for research are going to take precedent in 2024. I think a lot of underfunded uh, things that the normal pharmaceutical, uh, you know, corporations don't want to fund are going to be funded uh, through these DSI research. And I also am hoping and want to manifest, uh, alter- I don't want to call it alternative medicines because this has been the medicine for a while, but like uh, a lot of this, you know, natural remedies and solutions and research around that actually be funded through DSI. So, you know, hopefully one day I can... Maybe in like one quarter or two, I can run a DSI route, but I'm really, really bullish on what's going on in the DSI space. Also, shout out to the Refi DAO. I ain't mentioned y'all, but shout out to Green Pill. Shout out chapters everywhere. Refi DAO, DSI World. I really see a lot of these community based and these localized, uh, you know, groups as also shelling points for people uh, to come together. So start your Green Pill chapter, start your Refi chapter. Also, we're going to be doing potluck potlucks. Uh, where we bring different dishes together and kind of talk about public goods food too. So shout out to everyone in the event space. There's so much that we learn uh, from exchanging ideas. Uh, keep it going. Um, love to see it. I see it attributing to a lot of the conversations and even the products and the impact and the, and the straight up money that's coming into the ecosystem. So shout out to y'all. Um, I was mentioning before, different elements are watching. Big shout out to Solana. I got to mention Cubic.so. I don't know where they're at, but they're building quadratic funding as well. They're under construction right now, but I see a lot of uh, funding mechanisms literally like going towards uh, like new L1s. And I don't see anything in Cosmos yet. I don't see anything in like Algorand or Stellar. I mean, Stellar has a Stellar community for they're actually building stuff out there. Um, and even like Ripple or stuff like that. There are people with a lot of money and they're funding corporations and not public goods and open source infrastructure, things like that. So if you're a builder and you're building all of these stacks, I would heavily advise you to, to start innovating today because we have limited engineering capacities. Like Geekcoin has limited engineering capacities. Like build these on the layer ones or even volunteer your efforts to build that within Geekcoin stack or with our stack too. Um, and build with composability in mind. But I don't know, did I, did I shout out everyone? Did I shout out everyone? I think I shout out. I'd be running out of breath. But like, another shout out I got to give is the attestation and the impact. There's some buzzwords going on. Also, Crypto Altruism gave a, a 2024 recap or a 2023 outlook in the 2024 recap. And so did Oh Walking. I'm going to link that in the show notes too. But if you want to use buzzwords, from I'm not from the Web2 space, but if you want to use buzzwords like measurable uh, MRV, Measure, record, and verify, or something like that. Yeah, like like digital MRVs is a big trend. 
Um, I think like attestations, odd shade attestations, tracking impact is going to be huge. The adoption of Ethereum attestation services was huge. Go to attest.sh um, and you see people like um, like uh, Coinbase using this on OP to verify in KYC. You even see uh, solutions like Karma HQ using EAS to basically measure um, like progress reports from projects in uh, Gitcoin as, as well. And then you see things like hypercerts uh, emerging to tokenize that hopefully make markets. That's what is the 2024 outlooks. Also, a big shout out to Open Source Observer. They're doing some pretty cool stuff. This is what a lot of people in the retro uh, PGF or the optimism ecosystem use to basically track GitHub repos and their contracts to see you know, their dependencies, how much usage they have, and things like that. So we know the actual impact that they're making. So one of my predictions coming off of, off of this is like new kind of robust schemas in the attestation space uh, outside of just like carbon credits. I really see they're having more robust impact credits across different schemas and across different verticals and really streamlining the tracking of this using AI um, to help discern this and also um, like dynamically having this translated to a flow of funds. And I think for Zoom Connect, uh, one of the things that Owaki did was he, he made this thanking chart of like the big funders, the funding distribution mechanisms of the projects, and which is pretty dynamic enough of a spreadsheet. Uh, but one of the things that like even we're working on in the is how to like make that more dynamic and build this with uh, tracking and attestation services. So I see hopefully a, a, a flow in a world where we can generally track all that and then right now like retroactive pgf is based on people voting but hopefully like autonomously like airdrop based on this impact um and detect using ai any like civil attacks to exploit this um so we can have more dynamic uh, retroactive funding and then build a lot of these primitives and these rewards programs uh, for people to use but I went over a lot, man. I'm running out of breath. This is going along as I thought it. But 2024 tools, I kind of sprinkled most of my outlooks already there. Uh, but I see more services for nonprofit verification. Like I was saying, um, uh, this is something, if you go to like use Google Nonprofit, there's something called 10% or percent powered by percent. It's like tools like that I want to see for verified charities. I want to see also integration into Web2 platforms. Normally, we need to build with composability in mind. Okay, this is a manifestation. I don't know if this is going to happen. This is a manifestation. We need Web2 companies to adopt, hey, this, this profile. Uh, firstly, we need to streamline usability and onboarding. So when you create a, a profile, for example, on Lenster, it automatically imports for Twitter. And this profile is reused across like, Gitcoin and Gibbet. It's, it's crazy that we're building all these siloed implementations. So firstly, like integration into Web2 applications, especially social, and like the idea of actually using decentralized social outside of like just kind of experiments. And that's something that we're using uh, on Potluck for like the accelerated platform and our registry and also on your social, but well, hopefully we can streamline this and then make it work with every type of uh, platform. So you know, projects aren't making the same profile over yet. And it's honestly just a streamlined claim from existing services like GitHub or Twitter, things like that. But that takes people actually building the verification uh, services from day one. I also, uh, one of the things that I, I wanna see is more DAFs um, and then also more native kind of nonprofit structure localized based on where you're at. Uh, because I think we, we focus heavily on America, especially that is a big market because of the taxes and because of the, the wealth generation of the crypto ecosystem whatsoever. But I think we need more uh, localized or services that localize uh, these tax benefits. I see a lot of community-based tax that's coming specialized for impact. So we saw this Zoo Hacks. We saw Zoo Connect. We saw ReFi Hacks uh, pop up. We saw FTC. So please do more hackathons. Uh, we even did a civic hackathon in New York, but like that is tailored uh, to um, like impact, open data, things like that. There's already existing organizations with Web2 that have the same ethos. So we just have to fill in the gaps. I see more communities. I didn't even mention Regis Udite. Big shout out to Regis Udite. Um, so I see way more communities. Um, and yeah, like big shout out to everyone there. I also, oh, this is something that, that Kevin Milwaukee has been talking about that trying to manifest, uh, but hopefully um, it's a seen this way. And the way I see this kind of play out is the idea of retroactive VCs. So normally VCs don't have an incentive to basically give grants uh, to people, people building public goods and infra, 
But at the end of the day, I think the best way to onboard these people is especially people who invest in native ecosystems and uh, tools that build on their infrastructure. I think it's important that they fund this and that we kind of keep track of this and that fund them retroactively so their gains aren't based on equity, but rather than supporting uh, the you know public goods um, that they're inherently dependent on. So they kind of get that double upside of their ecosystem going up and then also getting rewards directly from there. Um, and then really kind of opening that traditional VC arm into uh, an avenue for getting additional uh, sponsorships and support. I also want to see more NFT and impact-based DAOs. Um, I think NFTs are honestly, uh, I think a lot, especially with IP NFTs and the proliferation of AI art um, and the integration into social are going to be huge. Um, and I want to see more kind of DAO tooling built into traditional social uh, frameworks um, outside of just being a DAO application. I want to see voting in the DAO as easy as uh, doing in a poll. I want to see experimentation with thing, thing like Friends Text for Impact, where essentially you get a token for making a pull request um, for, uh, uh, or like a key, like for getting making a pull request uh, uh, from one of your kind of most prolific uh, GitHub builders or, or maybe, um, yeah, there's, I, I just want to see more experimentation on um, that side of things and then um, more, more kind of decision-making coordinated in the tools that we use every day. I also want to, man, I'm getting tired, man. I want to see um, the, the, like, the rise of more uh, primitives and infra kind of being built in. And this is one of the things I predict for 2024. I see more kind of robust civil identity infrastructure. It kind of tying into UBI. But UBI, not just being kind of native stable coins, but being a collection of the NFTs, the, the meme coins, a bunch of ways to streamline kind of ecosystem um, rewards into these public goods funding mechanisms to verify qubits through these uh, civil uh, identity solutions like Gitcoin Passport, GitDollar has done this, WorldCoin is doing this, uh, but in a more streamlined way and an AI really helping with detecting any kind of people doing civil or bad actors and bots. Um, I also see the, I like, and there's something we're going near ecosystem is like account aggregation and linking different accounts and unifying it under kind of one blockchain experience so that we can easily map an account and make it accounts on behalf of other chains and transact on other chains under one identity mixed in with these identity solutions. So um, another thing I want, uh, yeah. And so speaking of airdrops and meme drops, I'm going to manifest this too. And hopefully I see this. It's like, we have a lot of token launch pads and things like that. We need to build like composably like public goods funding mechanisms directly into the payouts and into the tokenomics of these launch pads. Um, I also see um, a lot of kind of sad, but um, I see a lot of like, well, L1's emerging. But I'm just say that be less sad, positive note, but I see a lot of wars coming about. We have conflict everywhere going. I think this is tragic, but I think this gives a huge opportunity for us to actually use the technology. Often in Web3, it's very hard to onboard, except in Diamond, y'all killing it, but it's, it's very hard to get people to, like, first of all, internet, prog progressive web apps are not it. Like, no one's going to be going from their computer or clicking. We need native mobile applications, and we need to build products that have good UI and UX inherently, um, but we need to essentially, like, like, at the end of the day, it's like most of these applications are very hard to onboard people. We need to make it easier than Web2, um, but the fact of the matter is it's like easier to donate through traditional infrastructure, traditional applications, traditional donor apps, and it doesn't really make sense for people to make less money using these applications that are harder to onboard on, which is the state of where we're at on impact today. We really need to build these friendly user applications. But one of the value props that we do have is censorship resistance. And when you have whole people being censored by war, genocided, all that type of, you know, what's going on. I think, you know, posting the truth, using decentralized social um, and, and really uh, getting funding to where it needs to be is going to be really showcase in war. And we've seen this in the past with, Ukraine and things like that, but I want to see more applications there. I think people are doing a really good job in the journalism space. I know my homies are Resound and Voice Tech Dow working on solutions out there, but I really think um, solutions uh, between war and journalism are going to be 
huge. Um, yeah, and so uh, one of the things I also um, see is like, st oh, streamline legal rappers. That's one thing too. It's like, a shout out to Open Collective. I really like what they do with giving kind of fiscal sponsorship to open source software. Um, they take a fee out of that, but I think they really like over a hundred million um, for open source software to essentially have this legal wrapper. Um, and so I see a lot of kind of impact DAO based legal wrappers like MeDAO or rapper.wtf and ways for, uh, you know, people coming together and making these coordinations to kind of st streamline with kind of no funds, uh, these legal identities and not have a uh, culpability for, uh, or like liability that is. I also want to see people doing stuff every day. Like that's one of the things in the ecosystem that we have. Like people donate at the end of the year on endowment. People donate during these rounds. They have these Gitcoin spaces. Uh, but like this doesn't incentivize everyday action and you know daily users. And that's one of the things I don't like about Web three. The space like you ask any Ethereum emoji like what do you do every day? Or you ask any what is Solana ecosystem what do you do every day? It's mostly degenerate. But like if you ask somebody to eat, it's like. Like really, like people aren't using the blockchain and touching it every day. But I'm using my every like I'm using, I'm using apps every day in the Web two space. Shout out to Web two. I'm just getting hit to Web two, but Web two is killing it. And so you can do anything on Web two is crazy. Uh, but I really want to see applications emerge where you use it every day, and where incentivizing people to make impact every day. That's where I see the impact of Web three and social being really huge. I see um, even like for example in near ecosystem we got Sweatcoin where. It's, it's a Web2 app that onboarded Web3. Oh, shout out to account abstraction, uh, ERC4337. You have the account abstraction built in on near account aggregation, like being the, having the ability to easily make accounts on behalf of users and then onboard them after or traditional kind of wallet of service providers and SDKs that allow you to just use email. Uh, it's going to be huge for a lot of the onboarding experiences and you're seeing a lot of people um, integrate that like endowment. But like with these traditional applications, like Sweatcoin is like, you walk every day, like it incentivizes you. Um, we like use social every day. I honestly, I'm not, I've used like YouTube every day, but honestly, like, I don't think those killer apps are gonna be sustainable on Web3, but we have to make it so that we gamify the experiences of making an impact, that we're curating impact, that we're having fun ways of measuring impact and and earning rewards, and learning and sharing information, did coordinating uh, events and things like that. I think a lot of this will come uh, um, packed together from these network state solutions, but we have to make it so that people are using these applications every day, not just donating what's off. And it actually feels like I am integrating with my tribe and really getting incentivized to do that. Shout out to Regen Trials, by the way. Um, AI. Yeah, we only like I said, we got some AI stuff kind of popping in uh in April, uh. But I think one of the things that I think like we're gonna onboard a lot of AI communities is funding people who are on the safety element of side of things. I think from a, a product perspective, we're gonna have like AI like integrated into products. I don't think we're gonna be able to like train LLMs and things like that at this point effectively in twenty twenty four. I might be wrong, uh. But I think that one of the also major impacts outside of like onboarding like research institutions and players in the space to make sure that, you know, singularities don't take over uh, is um, the actual impact the individual developer has. We saw this with Etherscan. You see this on drips.network where actually like the big contributor is only one guy. Um, the ability to, for an individual developer to build something that is very impactful and then get these plural funding mechanisms where they know that they can make more than they do in traditional web two for building what they love is gonna be huge. So we're gonna see more individual devs building real products and building and knowing that they'll get compensated and with the assistance of AI. I don't really know about stable coins. I don't really know about RWAs and things like that. Uh, but this is kind of, I think I went over more of my like, you know, all my 2024 kind of uh, like outlooks. I want some manifestations, again, usable products. Um, integration in the web two products. I need dedicated impact BD. Like we need retroactive, like Gitcoin citizen, we need retroactive BD networks. And this is something that we're building at the Podlog, especially with our decentralized fundraiser network and kind of earning seeds for closing quadratic funding rounds and allowing that to dynamically happen and displaying it with a hyperboards inspired like dynamic uh, funding sponsorship section. 
uh, but we need to have kind of decentralized BD networks that get compensated for impacting a lot of these games into all of our uh, protocols. Uh, so really want to manifest that and see that happen. Deep penetration developing nations. I'm tired of like like literally all of the people in the impact space being white guys. We need to build the next leaders in the place where they're impacted the most. Uh, we need to build these network states. Like, let's please go to developing nations. If you're a developing nation, you want to start something. Again, I have no home. I'm down to pull up, uh, come to the trenches. So yeah, let's let's pop up. Let's network state. Uh, let's let's set people up. I see again more layer ones like manifest y'all. Like build public goods infrastructure. We don't mess with y'all if y'all don't. I see less scams. I'm trying to manifest less scams and get rich quick seeds. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much most. Yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. You got some impact. Uh, again, everything in the show notes. We got some exciting stuff in 2024. Hit me up to build. Hit me up to talk. Uh, yeah, love y'all. Happy 2024.